What is the Valley of Dry Bones in the Book of Ezekiel all about? In the time of Ezekiel, difficult times prevailed. Zedekiah was Judah's final puppet king. The city was put under siege and Zedekiah was taken prisoner by Nebuchadnezzar's army. They executed each of his sons in front of him so that he could see that there was no one left in the royal lineage to succeed him. They proceeded to remove his eyes, which meant that the last thing he witnessed was the death of his sons. Then Nebuchadnezzar ordered the total destruction of Jerusalem. Even though Ezekiel was living in Babylon, thousands of miles away from Jerusalem at the time, he received the call to preach around this time. After God had commanded Ezekiel to prophesy the rebirth of Israel, God then showed him a vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 3, Amplified Bible. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass all around them, and behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Ezekiel's great prophetic experience is not precisely called a vision, but what seems to be the sense of the phrase, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. Ezekiel saw a wide open space, a valley. This was Death Valley. The valley floor was so densely packed with human bones that it was described as full of bones. Ezekiel noticed them all around him, especially in the open valley. The people represented by these bones were not only dead, but also disgraced. An unburied remain with exposed remains was considered a shocking disgrace to the dead in ancient Israel and the ancient Near East. These bones were clearly not properly buried. The bones lay on the surface of the valley like the remains of remains denied a proper burial and left for scavenging buzzards. As an Israelite, and especially as a priest, Ezekiel understood the significance of proper human treatment. Apart from their presence in a living body, bones are dead. Dry bones are not only dead, they have been long dead. Bones are what remain when life has passed. Something that never had life would not leave bones. However, when something has been dead for a long time, we lose hope that it will ever come back to life. One might hope that a recently deceased corpse will resuscitate. Nobody believes that scattered, detached bones will survive. Ezekiel responded admirably to God's question with the only hope available, saying, O Lord God, you know. Ezekiel had no hope in the bones, but he did have hope in God. Ezekiel did not assume to know what God wanted to do with the bones. Ezekiel was assured that God did know. Ezekiel 37, 4 through 6, Amplified Bible. Again he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will make breath enter you so that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you so that you may come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel purposefully left the matter to God, to his power and wisdom in the previous verse. In turn, God assigned a task to the prophet. God gave him the command to speak, to prophesy to the dry, dead bones. From the outside, this appeared to be a vain, foolish act. Many years later, the Apostle Paul acknowledged that the message of the cross, God's rescue for lost humanity in the person and work of Jesus, especially his sacrifice at the cross, was foolishness to those who are perishing. If we want revivals, we must revive our reverence for the word of God. If we want we must put more of God's word into our sermons. Even if we paraphrase it into our own words, it must still be his. Word upon which we place our reliance, for the only power which will bless men lies in that. Ezekiel could only preach this message full of faith in God. Yet, if he was convinced that he spoke the word of the Lord, 
He knew God's word had mystical power. I will surely cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. God promised to breathe life into the dry bones. He promised to put flesh on those bones and skin over them. God would resurrect the once dead and dry bones. The bones could never create life by themselves. As the word of the Lord was proclaimed over them, they received God's promise of life. The life would be marked by a breath living once again in these bones. This has a dual sense because the ancient Hebrew words for breath and spirit are the same. This was a granting of God's spirit and the restoration of life-giving breath. Ezekiel 36.27, Amplified Bible I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my ordinances and do them. And its root, ruah, denotes the sense of air in motion. This can range from a gentle breeze to a raging wind, or from a breath to a raging passion. It has come to represent both man's spirit or disposition, as well as emotional qualities such as vigor, courage, impatience, and ecstasy. It includes not only man's vital breath, which is given to him at birth and leaves his body in dying gasp, but also the Holy Spirit who imparts that breath. Such is the rich variety of the word used here by Ezekiel. The resurrection that follows does not refer directly to individual resurrection from death. It is symbolic of the recreation and revitalization of the nation as a whole, and the interpretation shows. Ezekiel 37, 7 through 8, Amplified Bible. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a thundering noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on the bones, and flesh grew and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. If Ezekiel had any doubt, he put them aside and followed God's instructions. This proclamation of God's word appeared foolish to human eyes, but Ezekiel obeyed. As Ezekiel prophesied, there was first a rattling among the bones. As he continued, the bones began to assemble themselves into skeletons. The text does not specifically say, but it can be assumed that the bones assembled themselves properly, as skeletons and not as weird combinations of bones. When God restores, he puts things together in the right way. Muscles and tissues grew up around the bones after they were put together. The bones were alive with activity, but they lacked the breath of life. The dry bones were clearly resurrected in stages. The sequence involving bones, sinews, flesh and skin reflects an understanding of anatomy available to anyone who had witnessed the slaughter of an animal. It also reverses the decomposition process. The body is the soul's sheath, the soul's suit. The upper garment is the skin, the inner the flesh, the inmost of all, bones and sinew. So here were men in skin with flesh, sinews, bones, but, like Adam before, inspired with the breath of life, the spirit of life was yet wanting. There is no teaching in the scriptures that the resurrection of anyone from physical death will take place in the stages, such as it's stated here for the dried bones of the people of Israel. Ezekiel 37, 9-10, Amplified Bible Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. The previous verse left the valley teeming with resurrected, activated bodies that still lacked breath. Now Ezekiel was told to call upon the breath, spirit, wind, praying the breath or spirit would come on these slain, that they may live. Ezekiel had already proclaimed God's word on the dead and dry bones in this vision, and he'd witnessed a remarkable work. However, it was not enough. The Holy Spirit's work was also required. So I prophesied as he commanded me. 
He had the incentive of seeing the beginnings of a supernatural work with the activation of the dry bones. Now he prophesied and prayed for the work to be achieved. After Ezekiel's faithful proclamation of God's message, the work of reviving the dry bones was completed. The breath of God came into the reanimated bodies, and they stood upon their feet. The work of reviving the dry bones was completed after Ezekiel's faithful proclamation of God's message. God's breath entered the reanimated bodies, and they stood on their feet. Decayed churches can most certainly be revived by the preaching of the word, accompanied by the coming of the heavenly breath from the four winds. O Lord, send us such revivals now, for many of thy churches need them. The bones were not brought back to life to become a group of spectators or to live for their own sake. They grew into an army, and a very large one at that. They lived to carry out the commands of the one who gave them life we read of an exceedingly great army. So the Hebrew, or army of strong, courageous and well-ordered soldiers, the phrase in Hebrew is very full, a power, or great host, very, very great. Thus they rise, that the prophet and we might know how safe they would be in themselves and how terrible to their enemies. With all word and no spirit, we can be an army of the dead, solid, but without the true breath of life. Ezekiel 37, 11-14, Amplified Bible. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and make you come up out of your graves, my people and I will bring you back home to the land of Israel. Then you will know, with confidence, that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves and made you come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you, and you will come to life, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and fulfilled it, says the Lord. We could assume that Ezekiel realized the bones in his vision represented his people. However, God's revelation that they represented the entire house of Israel, not just those from the kingdom of Judah, may have surprised him. Those from the northern kingdom of Israel, which fell to the Azareans 150 years ago, would be included in the restoration. Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Both the southern and northern houses of Israel have reason to say this. God was their only hope for survival and restoration. I will open your graves and cause you to come up. The same message is conveyed via a slightly different picture. Instead of bones being exposed, here they are buried in graves. The result is the same. Life is brought to that which was dead. We read, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. The breath in the resurrected bones was more than just human breath. It was the spirit of the living God. This chapter in Ezekiel contains a lot of applications. First and foremost, God accomplishes what he sets out to do. He not only meets our physical necessities, but he goes above and beyond. God recognizes that we have a profound spiritual need that can only be met by him. We can't survive without him, because we can't breathe without the breath of life. Second, it makes no difference how much we have messed up or fallen into sin. God can repair all things, no matter how dry our bones have gotten. Ezekiel's task was not to be successful in the human sense. Instead, he was to be truthful in stating, this is what the Lord God says. Ezekiel's favored title for God was the compound name Lord God, or Adonai Yahweh. He used it over 200 times, though it appears just over 100 times in the rest of the Old Testament. It's a powerful combination that emphasizes God's sovereign authority and convent-keeping faithfulness. These are two themes of the prophet's ministry. He was to deliver God's message to them regardless of their reaction.